After a good night's sleep, it's day number two here at Heckfield for my Sling TSI build assist. After a heap of prep and getting organized on day number one, it was really awesome to finally start using these Clecos to start putting parts together for both the aileron and flat ribs. So it was just nice to see pieces coming together and feeling like I was starting to achieve something. So you'll see with these, yeah, so they give you these markings. So these are your, uh, your rivet sizes. Being, being what it is that I will use. The one. So, so we'll be doing all these. Have you counted some of these at all? Oh, these ones here? No, haven't done them. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Yep. Nice and straight in the hole. Okay. A little bit. So I just want to make sure these, uh, for the head of this, will be pretty much flush with the skin. So we can go okay. a little bit more with this one. Okay. Yep. Because your uh, this side will end up being like so. Gotcha. So you just want to really take uh, like little little bites at a time. Yep. Because you don't want to catch and then it will just pull it will just pull it straight through. Mm -hmm. This is good. Unfortunately, at this time, I lost my microphone as the charge died. So the guy that is explaining all this to me at the moment is Mitch, and Mitch helps me a heap through the first week of the build. He's uh, one of Errol's right-hand men uh, and responsible for majority of the, the builds that come out of the factory. What he's basically explaining to me here is that in terms of the rivets themselves, there's different sizes. And again, making sure that we're cross-referencing always to the build diagram to make sure that we're putting the appropriate rivet for the appropriate holes. Also, the fact that in a number of the ribs, there are some countersunk holes as well that we need to be aware of. And you can see here just with this packet, just how many different rivets there are in terms of the sizes. These as well, they might not be a bit. Sometimes with the rivets, they might not go for that. You might have to clearance the hole just slightly. Yep. That's just running the same size little bit as what these are. Yep. Through and then work. Sometimes the rivets can also have a little bit like a burr type thing on the sides there. Mm -hmm. That's something that normally will catch with on the sides. Gotcha. I really love during the week watching the camaraderie between the boys uh, and especially the relationship that Errol had with his workers. This was just a funny little exchange that happened. Very important. Have you seen how he does it? As I'm editing, you know, this is almost nearly two weeks since I was was there, so I get a chance to have a bit of a look back and, and remember some of these scenarios. And I can remember in particular with the aileron ribs, just this being so finicky and taking so long. And it just follows the same sort of pattern that I've been talking about in the previous video as well, in that it just takes a little while to learn. And again, just being really thankful for those that are around me to just help guide me. Because if I was doing it myself, uh, I just can't imagine how many mistakes I would have made, but then also how long it would have taken as well. Also in those early days, it was 
it was clear for me that I was trying to add majority of the rivets by hand where possible, but it was in a lot of cases it just wasn't able to clear the hole. So, you know, I, I managed to use that rivet gun to press down in the early stages, but as you see through the videos, you'll notice that I start to use the drill a lot more to clear the the, the hole size to make things a little bit quicker. So again, these are little learning experiences that you, you tend to do throughout the build. And I guess for me as well now, you know, as I start to use the rivet gun, this is, this is getting pretty cool because, you know, you're starting to see things now fully together and uh, a lot of the hard work that's been done um, starting to show off. Something else that happened on the day was Errol's first start on his high wing. So from my understanding, it's the first time that Global Aviation Products have built their own high wing in the country. So it was a nice moment to be a part of. Um, later on, it's much easier to cut the plastic along our rivet line. Yep. So then when we fill the rivets later, yep. we don't have to prep any of this. It's just we just got to fill it. Okay. Because otherwise if we don't, if we take all the plastic off and it's running tape along here as well to so after, so it's a little bit extra work. But if you just cut the plastic like so, so enough, enough room for the rivet gun and the rivet to go around the rivet. So you're really not pressing too hard, it's just enough to break the plastic. Yep. Be able to peel. Okay, you good thing. Peel this up like so. There's enough room for your um but when we rivet these along here. Yep. Your rivet won't catch the plastic. And then yep. after that when we fill the tops of the rivets to make them nice and smooth. Got it. So, So skin prep's going pretty well. We've used the soldering iron just to knock off the plastic um, where those rivets are going to be so I can get that prepared. Um, in underneath here, this is an absolute nightmare. Um, plastic in underneath, not much room to get it wedged out. I've got to take the whole lot out, um, scour um, the inside rivet lines um, and prepare them with some acetone. So that's going to be a bit of a job. Um, there's a lot of stuff in, there's a lot of work in here that you sort of think is not going to take a lot of time, but just takes an hour or two, it all mounts up. Just as a bit of an interesting footnote to my trip at the moment, uh, Tropical Cyclone Alfred is about to hit the Queensland coast. They're predicting somewhere in the vicinity of between half a metre of rain um, to fall. So the guys are preparing the hangar at the moment making sure all the planes are off the ground, expecting that the airfield's going to flood a little bit, uh, but preparing for the worst and hoping for the best. So you can see today has just been a lot of work getting things up and off the ground. Perfect timing to be up here this week. Hopefully, fingers crossed, everything's okay. As I sit here editing the videos about the week, 
I thought long and hard about how I should describe what the actual impact of Alfred actually was. You'll hear me talk a lot about Alfred in the upcoming videos. For me, it made sense to show the outcome at the start. Due to the slow moving nature of the cyclone, it didn't actually hit until Sunday. As mentioned, this video was taken on the Tuesday. We ended up evacuating the airfield on Wednesday, which at the time, with all the information being provided, was absolutely the right call. However, Alfred slowed considerably over the next couple of days and it didn't actually hit until Sunday. In terms of the nature of the cyclone itself, Gold Coast was spared from the destructiveness of the cyclone. It was characterised more by significant flooding and coastal erosion. I eventually was able to watch from afar back at home and one thing that was evident to me was the resilience in the Heckfield community. The airfield was back up and running a few days later. All right, so still preparing the skin. So again, it's kind of exactly the same as the previous processes that we've been building the ribs with. So we'll go through and I'll scour all the lines of rivets uh, and then use acetone just to make sure we clean them down. I'm going to tape uh, these lines here and then on the inside we'll be looking to add the corrosion paint um, deep through so we'll make sure we've prepared all there anywhere where metal's touching so the inside here and the inside underneath here will all be painted um, and then hopefully by that stage we've got the aileron sort of pretty well done um, and we can start on the next step So as I sort of mentioned, still similar sort of process. You can see in here, just sealing it all up with our corrosion protection. So I've got to do the insides on the lip here and then up above as well. So still a bit of work to do. I prefer to do the bottoms first because then as much as you slide out uh, like balance tube thing that sits in here. But these it's straight in, make sure a little lip at the front doesn't crack anything. And then yep. and then we can so we mainly want to make sure we catch all of our all of our holes as well, because mm -hmm. sometimes you can have it to where, let's say, if these ones up here line up, and then this one will be kicked in, so it will sort of go on on the angle. So you just want to make sure yeah, we gotcha. grab, grab yep. all of our ribs. So one where you can either just walk it. Is that the standard flicker? No, small one. Yeah. Yeah, it's standard one. One where you can grab a rivet on that band one. We saw you use either a rivet to sort of help you yep. find and guide. Yep, square it up. Perfect. Square up and then so I'd normally do every second. So I normally like to leave the very end one. And you you run up one way. So it's normally towards your open then you'll run up to. Yep. Otherwise you'll That's where you're saying it. the kink, right? Yeah, the, otherwise yep. it will become wavy. So let's say if you run, if you run this Drop way, like say these two, and then you run this way, it can develop like a, a rise pretty much. You don't really want. So we follow that the whole whole line down. Yep. So it's pretty much straightforward. We run all these up. Of course, of course making sure you create, you're catching your ribs. Yep. But you can also go. Um, in between your in between your ribs with these, yeah. If there's a slight gap in between, like so, be like that. Yeah, gotcha. So be lock it in. 
it's not in. Yeah, it's not locked rip. in. So you gotta make sure you grab that. Gotcha. And if you miss that, it means you're bending your tab down as well. So yeah, it's. Rips all down in. So far, there you go. Yeah. Oh, it's just it's caught there. can't really peel the skin up and have a look. So you'll press through the same as what I was doing before, so yep. it'll be grabbing a rivet. So like fishing around, you can sort of see the ribs. So if you do it like that, see, I can see the corner of the rib. Yep. There. That's always good to see. You know, it's peeled over it. Yeah, and yep. you click go. Click go, click go yep. As we ended day two, it felt awesome to have both the ailerons all clicoed up ready for riveting the next day. Little did I know that over the next 24 hours, the plans we set at the start of the week would change quite substantially due to the Cyclone Alfred approaching. So the wing assembly would take a bit of a backward step and I'd move on to other things in the build which potentially would have been a little bit further on normally. That said though, once again, feel like I'm just living my best life up here at Heckfield. Enjoying the process, seeing progress, and today for me, seeing these uh, aileron skins come together, fully assembled, was a really, really big moment. Until next time.